when you finally got to the WWF, was that like the culmination of where you wanted to bring your career? Because your character, I think, as a heel in the WWF, was definitely, uh, it was better suited for that Hogan, you know, run, uh -huh. r rather than just where they kind of had you. But was that like where you wanted to end your career pretty much, getting to the WWF? Play in... Uh mentioned black jack a minute ago and uh, i don't want to you know I, I i love black jack but again black jack cost me a lot of money up there uh we're just fixing a deal big deal me and jack uh we're bringing in black bart's wife uh her name was bonnie and she was going to be my manager she was you know she could be pretty rough she could chew tobacco with me in the whole nine yards and we got all kind of plans we're going to do with them I guess her, 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 me and me and her and Jack. Jack was up there one night, and one of the promoters up there, one of the bookers for events, called him fat. Pissed Jack off so bad, he was gone the next day, and we didn't see him again. Man, all the plans and everything we had got done just went Phew, right down the door. He's apologized to me several times since then because he knows it cost us both a lot of money. It just goes to show you with Jack, he <laughs> got something in his head, look out, buddy wasn't going to happen. So that's more or less what happened to me out there. But see, and yeah, and that was definitely um, the, you know, I guess what was that, about 1987 where that happened. And then I think where you really saw the takeoff was the feud you had with Brutus the Barber Beefcake. And we just talked to Brutus Beefcake not too long ago. And as a funny tie into your, your interview and his interview, is the WWE still ranks the blading or the cutting that you did of Brutus the Barber Beefcake as one of their top 10 most vicious moments that they've ever had in the history of the company. And that's got to be saying something, you know, 25 years later, basically. It was a time it just wasn't happening up there, you know. And I was surprised they did it, and uh, and it worked out great. And uh, never really found out really who got against that at the end because somebody did that had some say. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And they cut it a lot shorter than it should have been. We could have worked that thing for a year up there because shit, you're in a different town. You're in a different state every night, you know. <laughs> it ain't like you run the same town every night. We could have got a lot more mileage out of that one, and it, it worked out well. And uh, Beefcake, uh, I, I knew him first time I met him. Him and Hogan, they were tearing Eddie Boulder up in menace in the Tennessee territory, and we we're just getting started. And a bunch of matches with them up there, and a lot of teaching and training. And so I'd known him for a long time from the from the beginning, and it, it was a good run for us. And uh, uh, he, he he he's a good guy. Definitely it culminated in the uh, the infamous hair versus hair match where uh, Baldy ended up coming out of it. But, you know, that's uh, that was one of the highest rated Saturday Night Main events that they had had at that point. But you talk about Hogan and you talk about Beefcake and seeing them early in their careers. Did you think that Hogan was going to ascend to what he became? And obviously Beefcake was along the ride, you know, for much of the 1980s, 1990s with the Hulk and seeing them in that Tennessee territory through the WWF, did you see Hogan ascending to that level? I mean, you could see, he, he, he Mike, he was, uh, you know, there again, we were talking about that many ago, is, is, is that, you put yourself over how you present yourself. And I don't know wh where Hogan learned it. He had it, man, and he had the looks. I mean, he got a 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six guy, weighed 315, 20 pounds at the time, and talk. The only drawback he ever had was his hair. <laughs> You know, <laughs> he was bald for the first time that I met him, but you know, we wore the bandana. Nobody knew that, and uh, he, he was he was the total package. And uh, you know, history speaks for itself. And you wore the cowboy hat, and we didn't get a chance to ask it, but was that something you minded doing, shaving your head there to culminate that feud? Uh, it, you know, it wasn't the first time I've ever done it, and uh, it's one of the, you used to talk about that Saturday Night Live. That's one of the highest paid <laughs> deals I ever had because. Got residuals off that Saturday Night Live for a long time, and got paid through the New York office. I also got paid through Saturday Night Live, so uh, it was a pretty good, it was a pretty lucrative deal for us. Yeah, definitely, and that WWF roster at the time is kind of packed with guys that were familiar faces to you, because you even had a, a Ronnie Garvin was there at the time, Greg Valentine, you know, a Tito Santana, like a lot of great ring veterans, and I think the WWF is no more for the cartoony aspect of it but did you like getting in there and bringing miss betsy along for the ride with that group of guys that was in the wwf 
Well, there's the guys I was, you know, you forgot about Piper. Me and Piper were together the first time out in L.A. So him and I go back ever since 77 back there, and he was just more or less getting started. And, you know, I, like I say, uh, had a lot of, you had a lot of talent up there. And talent that was there is the like talent today. These guys, they honed their, 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 their skill in different smaller territories. You remember WWE had to take over like it has now. And they had different areas that they had, had experience where every area has its own likes and dislikes. And so you could be ring savvy and you know the business in and out. And uh, it was a lot better teacher, easier teacher. Nowadays, they got to go out there and there's one place to learn. It's right out there in front of everybody. They get better and get better and get better. They don't have that experience, that background that so many of us had. Yeah, obviously that territory system to breed and bred the guys coming through the ranks is a lot different and much better, might we all say. But, you know, for you, it was interesting that all those guys had a manager at that point. You did not. But do you think that Vince was uh, into the outlaw character and it was somebody that he could get behind because you were so different than other guys that he had at that point? I believe Vince were because he flew me up a couple of times. We had a lot of several different meetings. I think somebody got to him down the line of the load that I probably got heat with. <laughs> uh, I guess you know I understand when they talking about got heat with somebody. So um, I'd never have to find out who it was. I good I got some good ideals, but karma's a bitch. <laughs> so it'll come back. It'll come back. Now, when you departed from the WWF, was that something like you said? I know you said you had heat, some heat and stuff, but something you really wanted or did you want to stick in there for a little bit longer what i really did is what really retired me is i tore a rotator cup in a match uh i don't forgot who i was in the ring with brady boo brady i don't remember yeah i tore a rotator cup and it uh, i was bl- you know it bled in my arm and down my side here i was black all the way from my wrist all the way up to my shoulders from all that blood i was gonna have to have a surgery and they told me it'd take a year, I mean, six months for the surgery to heal and the joints, all of the, you know, the muscle as they reattach it and stuff. You're looking at another six month uh, therapy, so we're looking at a year. I was 41 at the time. I said, you know what, I'll be 42, almost 43. I'm done. So I, I just, I shut, and, and, you know, you didn't hear from me for a long time there. I did not face the business like a lot of these guys retire and they hit these indies and all this kind of stuff. Quit. <laughs> That's what I've done. 